All right, so welcome to this quick Hobbit um, PC any percent guide, any percent no major glitches. Um, so before I get into the levels and whatever, I just want to quickly go over to movement and such. Just so you know, I am currently using developer mode. That's why you're going to see I have more health. I have uh, a couple other features available to me that you don't, don't normally have in the game. This is just to make it a bit easier for me while I'm doing this guide because I don't want to heavily edit it as a more in-depth guide will be on the way. All right, with that out of the way, let's go into the movement a little bit. Um, so you have your, uh, you know, when you're walking, you're jumping, all that stuff. But the two important things are slash jumps, which is when you perform a grounded attack, like a slash, and then jump right after to uh, cancel the slash animation. What this does is the slash, uh, when you're moving, you'll see it kind of lunges me forward a little bit. And if you jump while that lunge is happening, you actually retain that form of momentum. So this is going to be one of your main, way main ways of getting around in the video game. And that is by slash jumping like so. Which is going to be a little faster than walking. The other important thing is to long jump, which is going to be shift space or uh, whatever you bind your jump key to. Um, and long jumping is very good. It is faster than slash jumping, but it does have one caveat. Um, when you long jump to the same height as you start, you'll see uh, Bilbo slides onto the ground like this. And there's actually, this isn't perfectly flat geometry, so I'm not doing a great um, display here, but yeah, you'll see that slide. And when you do have that slide, it would be faster to do good slash jumps instead. But if the ground isn't completely even, like uh, how you saw, I jumped from here to here, it's hard to tell when it's not even. You can sneak in long jumps and optimize your movement. So generally speaking, when you're going downwards, you want a long jump. When you're going upwards or even ground, you want a slash jump. And before I forget, uh, let's go into the key binds real quick. Um, there is a few key binds that I would recommend, um, but it's all preference. What I have done is I have my attack set to my right click and my jump double bound to my left click. This way I can slash jump by rolling my middle finger and then my um, pointer finger over right button and left mouse button. Which just feels a lot more natural than me, for me. Uh, instead of uh, what, it, what you would normally do would be left click space or I mean uh, whatever you have bound to attack. But yeah, I would recommend you know messing around with those binds. Another bind that's going to come up later that I would recommend rebinding. Um, or you don't necessarily have to rebind it. I just rebound it, so it's good mentioning. Is uh, where is it? Mouse look, uh, which is going to when you hold it, you can change your perspective. You can look down, you can look up, and this is only useful in like two places in the entire run. But it might be confusing if you don't know what it's about. Okay, let's go into some of the important tricks. Um, which are hard to explain in the moment when they happen. I will leave one trick for later, but you'll see it when it happens. Uh, and the first thing is long jumping up slopes. Um, there are certain slopes that look very steep. However, if you long jump into them, you can actually get a boost like so. And you can long jump uh, way, way higher or way further than you normally would. Uh, this is useful in many places. Sometimes it's hard to get the perfect height. Sometimes it's easy. It depends on the slope. Next one you'll see a lot is called a slope boost, which comes in two variants, a grounded and aerial slope boost. This is what a slope boost looks like. Not like that. I actually kind of messed it up. Um, I haven't practiced it on this spot. Let's go over to here where you actually do it in a speed run where I've practiced it. This is what a grounded slope boost looks like. All right. So what happens there is what you do is you jump and you do a jump attack, which is just going to be your... Um, melee weapon in midair and by doing so into a slope um, for many magical reasons you gain a lot of momentum and it boosts you this is very useful for getting out of bounds in other places but the grounded one might be a little hard to follow because uh, you do the jump attack so close to the ground so let me show you the aerial one instead which looks like this, this is the other variant and that is where you basically do your jump attack 
further into your jump. Generally speaking, the grounded ones are easier to execute, while the aerial ones require a bit more timing. Um, those are the main things. Um, yeah, let's get into the first level of the video game. So the first level is Dream World. What you're going to be, or the way you start off in the game is, it gives you every uh, every item, every weapon, every scroll. Normally you have to obtain the sword, and you have to obtain rocks and whatever later. Um, but you all have it in Dream World already. So when you start the run, you just want to mash enter to skip the cutscene. And you want to slash jump your way over to a certain spot. You can also fit in long jumps and everything to go faster. Don't worry about the movement too much when you're just starting to learn. Um... Yeah, so we're actually gonna head over here to this and this is where the first important trick comes in um, Which is we're gonna be doing a slope boost, but this is actually quite a difficult slope boost at least relatively speaking So what we're gonna be wanting to do here is let me turn on the game a little bit because I this level's kind of loud We're gonna want to perform a jump and we're gonna jump a little bit to the left here so we align ourselves with this slope right here and we're going to try to boost off that slope but since we don't have a clear shot we kind of have to strafe around to it and then we're going to try to ride this wall we are going to try to ride the slope that's here to an end trigger that is located around here That is about what the end trigger looks like. And that end trigger is actually supposed to be connected to this ladder. When you go up there, it extends quite far outwards. Um, but since it is uh, also extending over here, we can actually slope boost and hit it. So if that all went over your head, of course, we're going to do a little practical demonstration. And it should look something like so. All right, let me show that again because that might be quite fast. Get this little dot off the screen. Oh, I'm just going to fly mode back uh, to like speed things up. Like I said, I'll be using developer mode just for the sake of the tutorial. All right, so this might give you trouble for a little bit. This is just a hard trick. Even good runners will mess this up a lot. And what you generally, or what you try to do is you try to, um, I look at the log below Bilbo, pretty much. When I approach, I try to go uh, perpendicular with this uh, plank, rather, not log. And then the moment I reach the top, I turn right just the slightest bit to get the right angle. So that looks something like this. And then once I've turned right a little bit, I'm going to jump. And I'm going to hold A to air strafe left. And then when I reach um, this edge, I start holding W. And I right click for my jump attack. Um, whatever you bound that to is what you'll want to click. All right, so there you go. And then you just mash enter to skip this gutscene. Um, yeah, that is Dream Mold. Let's get into an unexpected party which is the next level. Now starting an unexpected party, um, you're gonna see a text box pop up randomly. Just hit E to skip this quickly. And once you pick up that gem, there's another one. You're gonna go to the chest and you're just gonna go grab the walking stick, which is the first, uh, which is when you get the stick. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention, um, you can only long jump with the stick. You probably found that out by now. And moving with the stick is faster than with the sword by just a little bit. So generally you want to switch to the stick right away as soon as you start from level. And you can use 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard to switch between your different items. But right now you only have the stick, so yeah. Alright, so starting an unexpected party, we're going to have to go all the way around. And this is one of those cases where you're going to be going downward a lot. So you just want to do some long jumps. Very simple. Just long jump down the slope. And we're going to try to cut some corners to go a little faster here and there. But that's all uh, straightforward and simple. And we're going to head over to this guy. Uh, we're just going to trigger a cutscene. He's going to tell us that the bridge is uh, is broken. And 
after we talk to him, we're going to go backwards up this slope here. And from this slope, we're going to long jump onto this roof, uh, which you're going to have to be high enough for. And once we're on this roof, we're actually going to um, long jump from the edge of the roof, perform a jump attack to get over to the other side of the bridge. There's actually invisible walls covering this everywhere, so this is how we get around. I'll show you the invisible walls in a moment. But yeah, as you see, I land on the invisible wall, and I land over on this side. Then when you jump over here, Bomber is just going to talk to you. And we just skipped a pretty significant segment of the game. And, um... Let me show you, this is what the invisible walls around here look like that we are jumping over. So yeah, after you've talked to Bomber, and let me turn this off. After you've talked to Bomber, you can uh, long jump to the left here and just go to this door, which is going to be the entry of the level. And once you leave that, you're in Roastman, the next level. Alright, so roast mutton is pretty straightforward. Um, just grab the stick as soon as the level starts and take a sharp right. Then we can actually clip through this corner right here and the end trigger is right, after, or, uh, right behind the level that we can reach. So the way you do that is you have to come in at a specific angle. What I try to do is I look at this ground texture. Um, you might see uh, these lighter spots. I'm drawing over right now. I try to align myself with that kind of. Um, it's not too strict when you're trying to get started, but yeah, I align myself with that. I hold W. Then once you start holding W going into this, you'll see that you're slightly moving right. And um, what I try to do is I look at the health bar in the top left, and I try to align the right side of this health bar with the edge of this texture right here and I do that while I'm like clipping in and going to the right so like so and that tends to get me um, clipping pretty well so keep holding W until you still be able to clip through like that and then you can walk to the other side. Let me show you that again though real quick and mention one more thing. If you aren't clipping, which is possible if you don't come in with the right angle, um, just tap D or A, so left or right, uh, once quickly while you're walking to the wall and it'll kind of reset your clip and allow you to go through anyway. Anyway, once you're through, just take another sharp right and go over to these plants right here where there is the end trigger for the level and voila on a troll hole. very easy that one troll hole is a little bit harder um troll is another case of the end trigger being behind the level um so what we do is we just get on this log right here and we're going to do a slope boost off of this slope right here um which is hard because just like dream world it's like we can't jump straight at it so instead we have a little setup for it first i'll show you then i'll go over even some of the good runners struggle with this uh pretty often so don't be ashamed if it takes you a little while um just like it might take me a second because <laughs> you know it's a hard trick that's all there is to it the beginning of the game tends to be quite reset heavy so let me try that again there we go that is what it looks like. For the record, there is an invisible wall here that we are avoiding. Um, again, this is some of the dev mode stuff. And uh, yeah, we're trying to avoid this invisible wall and go over that. Um, so, the setup I used for that, and keep in mind there's not one true setup. You can find your own setup, which works for you. Uh, I have tested my setup quite a bit though, and I'm pretty confident in it. Um, so yeah do whatever you like but just know that this is an option what i do is i go to the top of this log you see that um if you look at the geometry there's kind of a, a tip here and i try to go to the tip then once i'm at the tip i look at the background texture of the wall here so i'm looking at this wall and specifically, I'm looking at this little texture here. This kind of crack in the wall. It kind of looks like a lightning texture. 
So while looking at that, I actually turn my camera right until most of that lightning texture is gone. It looks like something like this behind the wall now. And what I look for is this little tip of the texture still sticking out. That's how I know I have the right angle when only that is visible anymore. Um, then what I do is I jump left or I press left and I jump soon after. So I'm going to be, it's going to cause me to air strafe. Then um, once you hit about the peak of your jump here, you're going to hold W instead. So you're going to hold forward. This is looking like a messy drawing. And you're going to perform your jump attack, which is going to send you over that way, ideally. So what that looks like is tip of the log, align the camera. So most of the lightning texture, the, the rock cracking texture is uh, not visible. I'm going to hold left and jump then W and jump attack. And I'm messing it up a lot now. Um, it is actually a bit more consistent than I'm making it seem now, but you know what? Uh, I'm being put on the spot with this tutorial, so I, you know, can't always hit it. Anyway, there we go. We, we hit over. Now the end trigger we're trying to head to is about here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to use the terrain here to fit in long jumps, which you don't have to do. You can slash jump if you're not comfortable trying to um, hit all the low slopes, but that's troll hole, pretty difficult level. Um, don't be discouraged if that level gets you stuck for a little bit. It is natural. All right, um, this is gonna be the tough one. Overhill is a level that we don't have a major skip for. Well, um, so it's the longest level in the speedrun. Um, but not only is it the longest level in the speedrun, it is also, uh, one of the more difficult levels. A lot of the level is going to take place around cliffs that if you fall off, you die. Don't be afraid to save during, uh, overhill, especially when you're just learning because it's just going to save you a lot of headache of restarts and whatever. All right. Anyway, once we get started here in overhill, we're just going to grab our walking stick and take a sharp right. And we're going to follow along this cliff edge here, um, trying to do some good movement where we can. Once we pick up this firewood here, uh, it's going to play a cutscene and put us down here. Make sure you're skipping the cutscenes, obviously. And then the optimal movement here is to long jump to this little pillar, long jump over to this little pillar, and then slash jump over to here, and then you can proceed to do all that. That can be a little bit tricky when you're starting out, especially if you try to do it fast. So some more beginner-friendly movement might be to long jump um, to the vine instead, which, oh, <laughs> that's actually a rare thing right here, which is actually something I have trouble with because I have the muscle memory for it, you know, whatever. But yeah, if you long jump to the vine, jump off and just jump and grab this, that might be a little bit easier and trying to parkour over this um, little pillar sticking out, but just do what you're comfortable with. Okay, so moving on, we can just long jump around here, um, take some sharp turns, obviously, try to save some time. And we're gonna go um, jump to this rope. You jump from this little ledge here because it makes you grab the hope, uh, rope higher, which is just gonna get you uh, to move a little faster. Then from here, we jump off the rope, grab this ledge and we go and do this part. Now for this part, I wanna make a quick dev mode save. Normally you can't save anywhere like I'm doing, but um, I'm doing this for the sake of the tutorial. So what you're gonna do here is you're just gonna grab this vine, then ledge grab this edge. And here for this part, it's a little bit of a tricky jump to do this fast. What you're normally supposed to do is you're supposed to grab this ledge, inch around, and you know, Get to the other side that's that's a bit slow you can do that if you are more comfortable with that um, but it is obviously not the fastest way there's multiple ways you can do this faster one way is to normal jump from this edge and grab this ledge which is quite generous um, you can also normal jump later which i haven't practiced in a bit because um, it's not the strat i use so let me give that another shot Yeah, normal jump later and you can make it all the way to the other edge. That's a bit harder and 
uh, because there is some sloped edges here, it can actually eat your jump a little bit. So I don't like that way of doing it. The way I prefer doing it is actually long jumping over there, um, which is also a bit weird because you need the right angle. Because if you are angled too far left, instead you'll grab the ledge again, in which case, um, yeah, you don't make it across. Um, so what I actually do for the fast way is I long jump to this vine. Then what I try to do is I try to hit this specific edge. If you see the geometry of this, you'll see that these edges are like at different angles and that's kind of what it looks like. So I try to aim for the yellow. Um, once you're at the yellow uh, and you get up, you're gonna have almost the exact right angle for the long jump. I just turn a little bit left and um, that gets me it normally oh crap that's why we made the save um but yeah the the long jump's a bit awkward it is not much faster um but it definitely is faster yeah that's what that's supposed to look like it's it's always awkward uh excuse me if i make mistakes while doing this tutorial because i i didn't really come prepared for the tutorial or whatever just wanted to put something out there quickly but yeah, it's, it's awkward when I'm put on the spot. So <laughs> luckily we have these practice saves and whatever to uh, help speed things up. Anyway, uh, once you're done with that, we just long jump around this edge here. And there's actually another trigger right here. About here. It extends backwards a little bit. Actually, it goes all the way up uh, for accuracy. But yeah, that's that's another trigger that's going to trigger a cutscene. Normally, you'd go around the left to reach it. However, you can just long jump straight into it, and that's just going to save you a bit of time instead of going around. So that's what we do. We just long jump into it like so, and that puts us on the other ledge. From there on, I'm just going to move on up. There's a slight movement optimization you can do here, which is to jump attack over this edge. Uh, you can just go around too if you're more comfortable. Then we're going to grab these vines, go around. And for the next part, I'll make another save uh, because it's awkward to explain without getting bombarded by rocks. But for this segment, these stone giants over there are going to be throwing rocks down. And you're going to want the rocks to land anywhere within this yellow area pretty much that I'm lining out. And if they land there, they'll knock down this pillar, uh, which is going to create a bridge for you instead. Um, and we want that to happen. However, if we enter this area here, it looks about like this. A text box is going to appear on the screen, which will give Bilbo a little monologue about um, saying that maybe the stone giants can make a bridge for him. So what we actually want to do is we want to avoid this text box because while this text box is on screen, the stone giants on the other edge won't be tossing down rocks. So what we actually want to do is we try to long jump over here and we go around the text box so we can reach this area without that text box ever appearing. And that way, um, rocks will start dropping quicker. That, that sounds complicated. It's actually quite simple. Don't worry about it. The, the important takeaway is we go around like so. And then hopefully here, it might take a while to get a right rock. This is RNG, unfortunately. And we're getting some bad one. But yeah, a rock will drop. We'll knock down the pillar. You can go over. And we're going to climb this vine here. Yep. And I guess I should go over this as well. So that's a, here's a little movement optimization you can choose to do. You can long jump into this vine, jump off, and go down here. Um, but you can also qu quick release vines by um, pressing E, which basically normally is just going to make you drop straight down, like so, but without the flying, of course, where if you left click, you jump off it. So E just drops you straight down. Um, but there's a trick you can do with this. <laughs> These rocks are so annoying when I'm trying to explain this. Uh, but yeah, the trick you can do with it is if you hold E while long jumping uh, into a vine, you will actually keep your momentum of your long jump. So if you do this and hold E, you'll just kind of st go straight through the vine. However, do keep in mind you need quite a bit of momentum to get this. So uh, make sure you're jumping a bit late off the thing. That's a movement optimization you don't, you don't necessarily have to worry about. And that pillar getting knocked down is how you normally go. However, we take this little shortcut, uh, which doesn't involve the rocks getting knocked down. 
Anyway, with that done, you've come from there, you you jump down here, and we go through this cave. Now, this little part is going to collapse once you stand on it. Um, so just make sure that... Uh, you can long jump over it to be safe. Or if you are... Um, it's breaking and that's weird. Or you can kind of run up it a little bit. Now it's gone, so I can't really show it. So you can run up it, uh, something like this, this far, when it's still there. And then it hasn't fallen yet. From there, you can do a normal jump or a slash jump to get to this side, but I can't show that because it already fell. But yeah, I would just recommend doing the long jump while you're getting started. All right, up next, we're going to want to go down here. There's a little optimization we can do here for movement, once again, that I'll mention that you don't necessarily have to worry about, but it's good to know about. And that is, if you walk off this edge and slash right before you walk off, uh, it boosts you off like so. And then you can do a jump attack, and you'll land straight in this hallway where we're trying to go next. Um, but you could just walk off. It would kind of do the same thing. Also keep in mind, because I'm in dev mode, I have more health than you would normally have in this section of the game. Um, but fall damage is relative to your health, so don't worry about that. You'll you'll survive this, but yeah. Um, the way I would recommend doing this while starting out is falling off and jump attacking. That's going to reduce fall damage a little bit. But once you get more familiar, you can do the little movement optimization. And maybe I shouldn't be getting into the little optimizations yet, but I, I like to. Anyway, once you're down here... Uh, I'm just going fly mode so these guys don't attack me while I'm explaining. Once you're down here, you're going to go through this exit. And we're going to we'll hug the left wall here. There's a cutscene trigger right here. If you get too close to the bridge, try to avoid that. Um, and we go back into this cave. Where another tricky segment is coming up. Once we're in this cave, we're going to jump right, which is going to trigger a cutscene about this gearbox. We're going to skip that real quick. And this is going to be the first... Um, pretty tricky clip that requires a lot of setup in this uh, run so what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to stand on this little corner here um which is a bit tricky to get right and we need to stand on it a specific way the setup i use for getting into the corner is pretty much approaching um approaching diagonally like so and there's this little spot on the ground oops where these two tiles intersect right here that i'm gonna jump from just normal jump and then if you have the right angle you'll stand right in the corner like so all right so once we're up here um uh, before I actually it's important that you jump into it from a distance. For whatever reason, the clip won't work if you try to jump uh, into it like this, which is also a bit of a, a different way of jumping into it. But yeah, there's for some reason, I can't get the clip to work when I do it like that, so keep that in mind. Um, and what you're going to do is, once you're in here, you're going to turn the camera right. Now, something that might happen is you turn the camera right a lot and it closes in on Bilbo like this. This is bad because there's a visual reference we use uh, that we need the camera to be pulled back for. So if this happens, you turn right too much and the camera closes in on Bilbo like this. Uh, what I do is I just back off, get off the ledge. I light press F to reset the camera. Uh, if you light press it, it only resets the camera distance. But if you hold it, you go into rock throwing target mode if you have rocks but yeah you light press f to reset the camera and then you get up there again okay so this time we turn the camera slowly and what we're looking for is on the right side of the screen you'll see this piece of the door appear specifically this part now it's a bit hard to describe how much of this part we want to show on the screen but this is our visual reference that we're going to use to get the right angle here so i think about this much as you're seeing right now Again, we're looking for this thing. If you see about this much, that means you have a good angle. Um, what you do from there is you actually hold W. Oops. You uh, hold W and you sneak. And what you're gonna see happen on the right side of the screen there is you're gonna see that we're kind of moving right a bit. You see that visual reference we had earlier? That's getting bigger. And that means that we're slowly but surely clipping into the wall. Um, 
Let me do that again while explaining the whole thing, but first note there are multiple ways to do this clip. The faster ways are much difficult than the slightly slower way, so I'm going to teach you the, uh, the slightly slower way first. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it will matter if you're, you know, at top level of the game. Anyway, we do that again. We turn the camera so we see it, we inch into it, uh, we sneak, which is holding shift by the way, and W. And once we see this scuffle, this shuffling motion, we, we look at um, how far we see it move right or how many times, because you see it kind of like pulses, right? We're not constantly moving right, it's like ish, ish. <laughs> anyway, once we see that happen about seven times, that's a pretty good time to go. I am. Um, Basically, the more you see yourself shuffle into it, the easier the whole trick is going to be. However, if you can do less, that's obviously going to be faster. But I would recommend seven, uh, seeing it move seven times as a beginner. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the next part is we're going to keep holding W and we're going to turn the camera into the wall like so. You can do that a bit slower, I'm doing it, uh, or you can do that faster, I'm doing it slow for demonstration. Uh, but you're going to turn it into the wall, so the camera gets close to Bilbo, but you're still looking into the corner. Again, this isn't the fastest way of doing it, but it's a consistent one. So once you're here, you're going to let go of shift, because I was still sneaking and holding shift during turning. Um, and once you let go of shift, still holding W, you're going to jump, and in, in mid-air, you're going to press D or whatever you bound to your right button, if you did bind it to something else. But yeah, you're gonna lightly press D. And the important part is lightly. If you press it too long, uh, you're gonna clip out of the wall. Now, if you do this a bunch of times, you'll eventually clip into the pillar like so. And this is what we want. Once you're in this corner here, uh, we're gonna align ourselves, our camera, so that the edge of the door here is in about the center of the screen. Once that's the case, I'm going to hold W and I'm going to slash jump. And I'm just going to let that happen. And we clip through the wall, skipping a bunch of time. Let me show that again. Um, I'm just no clipping with dev mode again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Turn, let go of shift, you jump, light press A midair. You do that a bunch of times, and eventually you clip through, turn to the wall, slash jump, and we're in. I'll show you the fast one just for reference, um, but just worry about that setup first. The fast setup I do is I do four nudges, one, two, three, four, turn far into the wall, and do some really fat A presses. And that's going to look like that. That's much harder, much more specific. You can learn that if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Anyway, once we're through that wall, we've basically skipped this whole section here uh, involving grabbing the gears and like going through a bunch of rooms and whatever. Um, so you're going to be over here. And if you haven't made a save anywhere at this point in the level, I would recommend making a save right here. All right, anyway, um, I'm not gonna do that for the sake of the tutorial. Actually, I'll make a developer mode save just in case I mess something up, which is possible. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, once you've gone down this slope, here's, a, here's an important part. Um, it's just something that can mess you up if you don't know about it. Basically, once we enter this area here, um, there's pretty much another text box trigger. And after that text box disappears, after a certain amount of time, a cutscene is going to play. And the reason this is important is because we're going to go around there and do some tricky jumps. However, the cutscene plays mid jump, it's going to kill our momentum and messes up. Um, so you have to be aware that that cutscene is going to play. So it looks something like this. Oops. And there's the cutscene. So you don't have to do the long jump I did. What I would recommend starting out is, because that cutscene is there, there's a limit to how fast you can do this. However, there are some cycles you can catch. So I would recommend just waiting here for the cutscene and then doing these jumps normally. However, if you're fast, 
Um, you can make it all the way to the second island before the cutscene is done. I don't think this is going to make it. Yeah, I only made it onto the first island there, and I got a weird boost. Um, but I'll try to show second island for the sake of it, but it's a little bit awkward. You need some good movement, and I'm coming from a weird spot. So you know what? Forget it. It's not important, but just know that if you're moving well, you can make it to that island, uh, but that's quite tricky. Anyway, once you're here, you don't have to worry about no more cutscenes. We're fine. Um, we're just going to move up the staircase, and we are going to long jump down to this little uh, floating door, whatever it is. Um, and here's something important that I should mention. This game has this issue called long jump glitch. It's basically some physics weirdness, depending on how much CPU resources there are available. Um, so if your PC is lagging, or for whatever reason, you hit a certain CPU speed, all right, this is going to sound complicated, but the important takeaway is there are times your long jump can be shorter and it can be longer. If you've noticed your long jumps cutting short already, you will have to be careful on this part. If you don't have this issue, then it's not as big of a deal. What we're going to be doing is we are going to jump down here and do a jump attack. Uh, sounds pretty simple. It is pretty simple. However, if you do have the issue, the, the long jump glitch, as we call it, your jump will get cut short in the middle of your uh, long jump. So you'll actually have to make sure that you're jumping from pretty high up the staircase and you're timing it pretty late because otherwise if your jump gets cut short, you won't make it. But if you do do it from the edge, you'll be fine even if you get the long jump glitch. So you only have to worry about that if you do notice that issue, but it is important mentioning it. Anyway, coming up, we go left here. And if you still haven't saved, I would recommend making a save here um, because coming up is the Bean Island jump. And you know what, just to show, I'll make a save. Um, so what we do now is we jump down here. We can just do some long jumps. And oh, I should have explained what I was doing there. Um, what I do while long jumping down here is I actually move my camera up. So I hold tab uh, and the, the default key for that is caps lock, I believe. Um, but yeah, for me, it's tab. So I hold tab and move my mouse down. So I get this overhead view and that makes the setup for the next trick a lot easier for me. So I just do that mid long jump. And then um, we're going down here to this island that is shaped like a bean. Hence, we call it the bean island jump. And before I do it, let me show you what this jump looks like. We are going to try to jump from here to here pretty much. And this is just barely possible with a long jump if you time it well. So this jump is quite tricky. And um, that's why I recommend saving before it. Anyway, so it looks something like this. And that is how you make it. It's important um, that you have a good angle doing this. What I look for is if you see the edges of the geometry right here, I try to be on the yellow edge here and I try to be perpendicular to this edge. Um, so yeah, um, just straight from that edge over to this edge. That's the important one. You don't have to worry about the technical terms. Not that they're that difficult to understand. But yeah, this is the, the short path that you want to try to take pretty much from yellow to yellow. Oh, I just went to whiteboard mode. I hope I didn't just flashbang your eyes off. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, there you go. It's quite a tricky jump. Don't be, you know, you might miss it a couple times. It happens to everyone. Uh, from there, we're going to pick up this troll key and open this door by pressing E on it go through and the next of the level is pretty straightforward we're gonna go down these slopes down this tunnel I'm gonna go along this edge and we're gonna grab this vine this part is a little bit tricky I will go over two ways to do it, the faster way and the slower but safer way. So the fast way to do it is you long jump into this vine. You try to hit uh, jump towards um, the direction where the next vine is. And as soon as you land on the little rock across from us, you're going to flick your camera left a bit 
and that way you're going to be able to walk up this rock and go around. Now it's important that if you're doing this way, um, you're holding W while climbing this vine. Um, because if you don't, you'll see that Bilbo does this reaching out animation, which is going to automatically make him target the next vine, and that's going to mess up our angle. So if you do that right, uh, you won't slide off this rock, and you'll be up here. It's a bit tricky and a little bit risky if you're starting out. So what you could do instead is you could just uh, jump to this vine instead, go to this vine, and climb up here. It's a bit slower, but you can do it that way as well. Anyway, um, I'm just going to show the whole thing again. Once you reach this part, a cutscene is going to play, and here we have another slope boost. The goal of this slope boost that we're about to do is to... Um, let me get a good view here so I can draw. Alright. What we want to do with this slope boost is there is a slope we can boost off uh, right about here. This is an estimate of what it looks like. It's not very accurate this drawing but yeah we want to try to boost off this slope get an angle like so and then we want to interact with thorin up here uh, because once we interact with him a cutscene is going to play and that cutscene is going to put us up here and there's actually an invisible wall covering this entire thing however we can talk through him through the, uh, we can talk to him through the invisible wall, so that's going to put us on the other side and allow us to skip a bunch. So, in theory, all we have to do, or in practice, all we have to do is we slope boost, oops, and mash E to interact, and that puts us up there. For the slope boost, um, this is a grounded slope boost, meaning you're going to want to jump and attack pretty much as soon as you leave the ground. Um, and the way I try to do it is I look for this little thing here. Let me outline that a bit better. This little spot on the wall. And I try to approach it slightly with like an inward angle. So I get this angle. So you run up. Then once you get here, you do a quick jump. And you attack right away. And that should boost you up. Then while you're going up, you're going to be spamming the E button, or whatever you say your interact key to, and that's going to put you over at Thorin. This one is also a bit tricky. Don't be afraid of, or don't be ashamed if you miss it. Anyway, once we've done that, we're finally done with Overhill. We go into this cave, and the sweet relief of getting through Overhill is done. Next, we're in Riddles in the Dark. Alright, so Riddles in the Dark is a lot more straightforward than Overhill, luckily. Uh, it's hard to see here. We do have Sting now, so we can hit 3 to swap to Sting and see a little bit. What I usually do here is I just grab Sting so I can see uh, my angle first, and then I do my usual movement um, with the, the, the walking stick, because you can only long jump with the walking stick. Anyway, um, before I go further, these bats here can be a pain. Uh, just know that they will be shooting you while you're parkouring here, so be careful. Um, yeah, the movement here is pretty straightforward. I'm sure I don't need to go into every detail of the movement anymore now. Oh. But yeah, these enemies can be an absolute pain. Just know that. And over here, we have some slopes that we can walk down. Or if you want to be fancy, you can grab the sword in advance and do these little boosts off to go a little bit faster. But yeah, once we're down on this bottom edge here, we just walk off the left side like so, and we slide down. Make sure you're walking close against the wall. If you don't, you'll fall straight down and you will die from fall damage. So you want to walk into there so you get that slide. Then over here, there's a web. We can only cut this web with a sword, so make sure you have the sword out. Then we're going to switch back to the stick, get up this slope here. These spiders are going to be annoying while you're doing this. And align yourself with this uh, web silk hanging from the uh, ceiling. And do a long jump. Jump from uh, the web to there. And because I did it a bit slow, I didn't have speed anymore. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, let me show that whole thing again. What we do is we slide down here. Cut the web here that's not here anymore because I've cut it already. 
go up here, align ourselves with the silk, and jump over here. Cut the web here, and we continue our movement. So you're going to be switching through the sword and the stick a lot there. Now once we're down here, there's going to be a cutscene that we're going to have to hit. After this cutscene, what we're going to do is we're going to long jump into this wall here, um, which is going to be faster than going around. And we do a jump attack to make sure we reach it every time. And that looks something like that. Um, ideally, you don't take fall damage like I just did on the wall, uh, because that slows you down a little bit. Yeah, ideally it looks like that. Once you're down here, we're going to want to long jump into this edge here, and pretty much you're aiming for like the back of the plank there, the um, scaffolding. And if you do that, you'll ledge grab the scaffolding. And if you now hold left, you're actually going to be clipping out of bounds thanks to this. And if we climb up with W, make sure that you only tap W. If you press it more, you'll clip back in bounds. Then we're going to aim right, and we're going to long jump over to here. So you're just going to hit shift space. And there's some invisible floor here to stand on. For reference, it looks like this. Um, so, yeah, you just want to go on there, and we're going to walk over, and you might disappear during this, that's just the way the game renders, that's weird, but you're completely fine, and you just want to walk straight off of this, which is going to clip you through the wall here, and we are, we just skipped a, a big part of the level. Yeah. Alright, once we've done that, we are going to climb up here. And you can just do some more optimal movement here. Um, and we're going to climb up these chains. When you're climbing these chains, there's this small movement optimization. You can do very small. It's hardly worth it. But by jumping back and forth between the chains like so, you can save just the, a fraction of a second, really. Um, so yeah, normally you can just climb up like this. And that is completely fine. Once we're up here, we are going to go over to this minecart, hit E to get into it, and then we're going to hit all the signs along the way once by pressing E. Now here's an important note. Um, you see the sign coming up, you hit E of course, but every time you make it to this stage in a speedrun and you hit one of these signs, that's actually stored in memory until the game closes. So that means that anytime you get to this level again, um, the signs will still be flipped that way. Um, which is something that's a little bit iffy when it comes to speedrunning because obviously in a speedrun you don't want to be able to prepare things in advance, you want the speedrun to be executed in one go. So some people in the community think that's that's not really okay to have the signs there in advance. The important takeaway from that is pretty much every time you do the signs in a speedrun, you're going to want to fully restart your game the next time you do a run. Uh, so close it entirely, don't just go to the main menu, and that way the signs won't be flipped uh, in advance. You'll have to flip them manually. Anyway, once we are done with the minecart, it'll put us down here. And uh, this is pretty much the end of the level already. There's just some movement we can do here to speed things up. And um, there's a slight optimization here that we'll go over. Um, normally you would go around here and do some jumps to get over there where the ring is. Um, that that's the end trigger. However, what we can do, what we can do, sorry, I can't speak. Is there's actually this um, edge here, this slope, and what we can do is we can approach the slope kind of like so, and long jump up it. Um, which, like I showed in the movement thing, is going to boost us upward to where the ring is. So that looks something like this. Yeah, uh, it looks easy. It is pretty easy. Uh, but you need to have a pretty good feel of where the slope is, because if you walk into it and long jump too late, you'll slide down like so. If that happens, you can just go around the other route or try again. It's not a big deal, but it is a slight movement optimization. Anyway, once you're there, grab the ring and the level, and you're done. Flies and spiders, next. Okay, so this level has had some innovation um, in recent times, meaning we have a new route, and I actually am only really familiar with the newer route um, when it comes to PC. So I am going to teach you the newer route, and it is not necessarily the easiest route, but I do believe it is very doable. 
So if you do ever feel like you need an easier route, there will be a more in-depth guide coming out very soon, or you can just ask one of the runners in the Discord, uh, whatever the case. Anyway, once we start this level, I'm going to grab the stick as soon as I start. Got a long jump, skip this text box, grab this vine, go up, and um, long jump down here. I'm going to take a sharp right, and I'm just going to kill these enemies uh, using my dev mode just so I can explain this real quick. We're going to be doing uh, a slope boost out of bounds here. And this, um, the angle looks something like this. You see this darker spot on the wall here? Just about after that is where you want to start it. Then the angle you're going to want to go for is you're going to want to be pointing inward to the wall for the most part. So if this is the angle of the... If this is the slope, for example, it's not exactly how it looks. We're going to want an angle um, between like here and here, um, which is going to look something like this. This would be a correct angle. And then we're going to do a grounded slope boost, which is going to move us up there perfectly. It's a bit tricky. Um, if you do mess up your slope boost, there's an enemy here you can hit. And when you hit an enemy, you'll actually see our jump slash meter recharges a bit quicker. So you can do that to try again. And you can also try a long jump which might be easier for you might be harder for you it kind of depends with some system physics weirdness um, as well as just how good you are at it but you can also try to long jump up this slope if you come in with a really steep angle and try to get all the way up is actually something i struggle with and i don't opt to go for very often but if you do it it looks something like this so show the whole thing again this is how it might look fast like that. Once you're up here, we are going to take a left and go over here. And this rock, um, we want to go onto this rock. It's a little bit iffy to get up on, a little bit tricky. Um, basically, you want to long jump to... Uh -uh, let me get the pen out. You want to long jump to about this spot. And if you do that right, it'll slide you up onto the rock. Um, which looks something like so. However, if you're aiming too far, too far right, uh, you might not get up. And actually, wasn't far enough right. <laughs> yeah, okay, it might look something like that. It's actually harder than it looks. I kind of got lucky uh, hitting it when I was trying to miss it. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it's not too bad. Just need to know how to hit it. But there is one thing to keep in mind here. Be very careful not to accidentally jump too far left and land in this pit. If you land in this pit, it is pretty much a uh, soft lock and you'll have to load your last save because you can't even die in here. Looks something like this. Um, however, I have dev mode so I can fly out. But yeah, be careful not to fall in there. All right. Once we're here, we're just going to jump up this rock, and I didn't mean to jump back there. Uh, we can long jump down over to this side. And once we're here, we can do some cool movement uh, to get over there. So let me just show the whole thing. It's not very difficult, but it's nice to get the full picture of how to do it fast too, in my opinion. So we can do some cool movement boosting off of this slope here. Adding in some long jumps, boosting off of this slope here, and that's going to get us around very quickly. Coming up, we have another slope boost. Um, I'm going to show you an easier way and a harder way to do this. The harder way is obviously faster. Um, let's start off with the harder way. So there's a slope here that I'm going to show you using the polygash, which is basically just going to show the level's geometry. And we'll see that um, this yellow beige wall is something we can't slope boost off if we walk into it we'll see that bilbo pretty much just remains walking the direction where he is on the left here this red and purple if we walk into it we'll see that bilbo gets like slid around that's kind of a metric for if it's slope boostable or not and my game just crashed I mean, that happens sometimes when you're in dev mode unfortunately um let me start that back up get back in the dev mode sorry about that um 
but yeah where we were sliding pretty much means that we can slope boost there so the sliding part is the part that we're going to want to aim for um let me find a save real quick here we go luckily i came prepared um yeah the sliding part is what we want to aim for however uh it's a bit awkward to do grounded slope boost uh, while you're sliding <laughs> sliding around like this so what you can actually do is um show the poly cache. you can go to this wall and run into it here because if you're running here you'll slide around and it makes the timing hard run into it about here and then if you do your grounded slope boost uh it's still gonna hit the edge because you're just or it's still gonna hit the slope that you can slope boost off because you're just just below it um so it looks like that and i died because i had almost no hp and <laughs> i forgot this is that kind of save i was using um but yeah normally you're fine when you jump off that slope uh all right let me hide the poly cache but yeah that's the faster way of doing it it looks like this when you're doing it full speed i look at this plant by the way this rightmost plant and i try to go on the left side of the plant before i do it like that and I died again because, again, I forgot about my health. Whatever. That's fine. That's just going to put us back to where I actually wanted to be. And that is back here. Um, so as an alternate slower but safer strat, you can just grab this vine to get up here instead. Once you're on this log, you can actually angle yourself backwards this way. You can look at this little tree here, and you're going to want to go to the right of that pretty much. And you can long jump up that slope. Uh, it's something I've not really practiced, but I imagine it is quite a lot easier than doing the slope boost. There you go. That's what it looks like. And then from here, you can follow this edge and... Oops. <laughs> Let me do that again. Um, you probably want to go... There's an invisible wall here. You probably want to go behind it. Again, this is quite, quite new and experimental. Um, but maybe you want to go behind it to be safe. But yeah, anyway... You're going to want to go over in that direction. However, I will be showing you the hard strat because it is not that hard and I like it much more. All right, once you're over here, we're going to head over this direction. Now, again, I hope my game doesn't crash from showing this. We have some invi invisible wall stuff going on here. Um, we're going to want to jump around this invisible wall. Where you see the coins down there is about where you can jump and won't hit the invisible wall. Uh, if you do hit the invisible wall, it's bad. You can get soft locked here. So yeah, keep it, keep an eye out for that. Oh, poly cash. Boom. Very useful this developer mode stuff for the tutorial. All right, so yeah, we jump down. And now we want to long jump up this slope here. And we want to be pretty careful here. If we fall out of bounds, we'll get warped back, um, which is something we'll get into more later. But for now, it's fine. Um, just try to not fall off. You can go up this slope. I long jump because it is a bit easier. Uh, you might slide off accidentally otherwise. But you can do a slash jump to be a bit faster. Once you're up here, you're just going to go to the corner and long jump up to the log here. And this part can be quite tricky. What's coming up next? Um, yeah, you might struggle with this if you're doing the run. I'm going to make a save here but i recommend just um practicing this a bit getting a good feeling for it because it's really not that hard when you get a feeling for it anyway what's going on here is i'm going to show you the poly cache again because it's very useful when we're talking about slope boost and you see that light green part in the top left that's what we're going to want to slope boost off of at a specific angle to get up on this rock uh, uh, uh boom and what I do for the setup here is I basically, um, this leaf that's in the way is very annoying. But basically, when I walk up here, I look for this little corner of the geometry right here. And you see from this corner where it like bends, uh, you could kind of imagine a line like so. And I try to jump from the middle of that line. So what that would actually look like in practice is... I just stand about right here. Then I try to face almost directly at the slope. Let me move this out of the way. Um, I try to face almost directly at this slope that I'm about to go to. 
Um, but if you are going to want a very exact angle, you're going to want to aim yourself a little further left, but I feel like to the right is just a bit more generous. Once you do that, you're going to jump and you're going to jump or hold forward and you're going to jump attack at the peak of your jump. Like so. Generally not that hard. Let me show it again. Um, what you have to keep in mind is normally for a slope boost, you kind of have to time it to before you hit the edge. For this jump, you actually want to time it for the peak of your jump instead of just looking at the edge. Um, just because of the way the, the geometry works, it's more generous that way. Um, but yeah, there it is. If you fall down here to the left, that means your angle was too far left. If you don't get a boost, you might have been in the wrong position. Um, if you get a boost too short, you were probably standing too far right. It's all kind of case by case, but um, yeah, experiment with it. Once you're up here, you're fine. However, um, before we move on to the next part, let me show you what you do if you mess this up. Because it can be quite awkward. So let's say I miss this boost and I fall down. What you actually want to do is you want to start jumping as soon as you fall. This is important because the game remembers the last spot you were walking for about over a second as a safe spot. Um, what this actually means for me is if I jump down this hole here, it's gonna put me in a falling state. And once you're in a falling state for too long, the game detects something is messed up and puts you back at the last spot it thought you were safe. So um, what I was talking about with the jumping um, is actually, if I'm walking around like here, right? Um, because I'm walking and I'm walking for multiple seconds or I'm standing on the ground for multiple seconds, uh, the game remembers that as being safe because I was able to walk here for multiple seconds. However, if I start jumping, the game doesn't know for sure if I'm safe or not, so it doesn't remember this position. So when I'm jumping and now I go and mess myself up, put myself in a state where the game thinks, hey, this is wrong, we're going to put him back, it's going to put me back at where I last walked. That benefits us here as a backup because it means we can get back up on this uh, log. So yeah, just keep in mind, if you miss this, Start jumping right away. That way, your last position will still be back in the level where you were fine, and uh, you'll be able to recover. If you weren't fine, you might be able to do some um, a weird backup, like maybe you can jump down there? I don't know. Oops, I didn't mean to die while showing that off, but um, it's pretty much a huge time loss if you aren't able to clip or back up. So really try to drill that in your memory that you start jumping and you jump out of bounds uh, if you mess up there. All right. Anyway, once you're actually up here, you're going to want to walk to this corner. Be careful not to walk too far. And you're going to want to long jump over to this log. And we actually want to look at the end of the level there. Uh, where there's a huge void now, there's actually supposed to be a level loaded, but it's not loaded right now. And the way we load that is there's a trigger where we are, and I will show the trigger in full using some cheat codes I have. Yep, there it is. And the right side yellow trigger here is actually what um, loads that part of the level. And uh, what we do to load it is we just walk off this log at a specific angle to make sure that we go through the trigger. And you'll see that stuff back there is loaded now. Um, what that looks like fast is, let me turn those triggers off. And go back up here. What that looks like fast is actually look at these little green specks on this log. You have this one and you have this one, but the top one is the important one. And I try to go over the top one at just an angle facing slightly right, and that will get me through the trigger. If you walk off here and you don't hit the trigger, what you can do instead is you can turn around and you can strafe along the log right here, and you'll hit it anyway, but it's a bit slower. Um, so ideally you wanna hit it as you're just walking off there. Okay, that was a mouthful. Um, so, uh, let's, let's show that whole segment in one go just for, for recap purposes. This might be overdoing it, but 
I realized that I went over a lot and it's not actually as complicated as it sounds. So starting from the boost, we boost up here, do some movement. We avoid this invisible wall by only jumping down once we're aligned with the coins that are normally down here. Get up this slope, go across the edge here, careful to not fall off, jump onto the log and move over. Now, if you want to play this extra safe, um, you want to just walk for a bit while you're on here to make sure that your safe position is set here. What I was talking about earlier with the, the whole warping thing. Um, but generally, while you're doing this movement, you'll be walking at some point, so it should be set there. But if you want to be safe, yeah. Anyway, you do the boost. Go over to the corner, jump, walk off this little green speck, and the next part of the level will be loaded. From there, we can keep going out of bounds and go up here, continue moving out of bounds. And I'm gonna show you the easy way and the hard way for this again. Um, we wanna reach the back part of the level here. Um, the easiest way to reach this, it's slightly slower, is we see this web here. Uh, I'm gonna show you the polycache actually, which is going to show the geometry once again. And you'll see it's there's like a tiny invisible wall over the web that we can actually walk over like so then uh, once you're up here you just want to walk over here if you walk too far right you'll slide off uh, walk over here and you can go over here and we want to start going up here uh, but it's possible that uh, it's a bit hard to see so you might slide off the web and if that's the case, you'll be over here. What you can do instead is you can do a slope boost here, which will be faster. Um, this is the fastest strat. Ideally, you go down here on purpose and take that slope boost if you're going really fast, but I wouldn't recommend that until you're quite good. Uh, or you can um, get into this corner here, to the right side of this web pretty much, and align yourself with this green speck on the wall and just long jump and hold W, and that'll put you up there as well if that happens. Um, but yeah, you, I would just recommend trying to walk over the web first thing. Otherwise, go over here and try to do that. Um, yeah, once you're up here, we're going to go around this little invisible wall here on the right, and we're gonna climb up this, um, up this little hill, long jump down this one, climb up on this one. And what I do while I'm going up here is actually look at the geometry. Um, I recommend while you're going up here to be looking out for this corner of the geometry right there. If you jump from there, um, for context, what we're about to do is hit an end trigger that's invisible and hard to spot. So if you have a consistent approach, it'll be easy to always hit that end trigger. But yeah, I try to go over here. Then from here, if we go and look at this thing that's just floating up here, and we just align ourselves with about the right side of it, just try to have the right side in the middle of the screen. Or sorry, the left side, my bad. Um, and we long jump down. And do a jump attack. The jump attack isn't necessary, it's just faster. We'll hit the ending trigger and uh, we can finish the level. Now I would like to show that. Um, I'd like to show how the trigger actually looks for you because that will make it a bit easier to visualize uh, what we're trying to hit. Um, but that is the approach I take. Um, I might take some shortcuts here and there, but generally that's the approach I take and the one I'd recommend. Um, but you might mess up your approach and be a little bit lost on where the trigger might be. So I'll show you how it looks anyway, using some cheat codes. And there it is. The white box you see down there is the trigger. And if you take my approach, you'll hit the trigger as soon as possible. However, if you miss a little bit, um, like let's say like this, you are usually going to be too far right of it, so try strafing left. If that doesn't work, try strafing right. All right, that's that. Next up is gonna be a tough one, unfortunately. Okay, so Barrels Out of Bond. This is a wall for veteran and new players alike. Um, it's just difficult 
very specific, the trick that we'll be doing here. Don't be discouraged. It's hard. You'll get there. We'll all get there. We're in this together. All right. So once you start the level, you skip the cutscene. You're just going to turn around right away. And you're going to uh, get over to this area here. Basically, the plan here is to... Um, the plan is to slow boost up here. Then from here, we try to clip into this tree. Then we try to... Uh, uh, uh. We try to climb the tree by doing some jumps. Then from the tree, we long jump over here where there is an end trigger ending the level. It's all very specific and hard and I will show you how to do it. I'm quite confident in my setup, but recently I've been missing it a lot to be honest. So, um, it is what it is. Anyway, what I try to do here is actually look for this splotch on the wall. You'll see that right here. There's a bit of a white splotch. And I try to align myself at the left side of this white splotch. Then I light tap the F key to get the camera to be reset. And I look at the left side of my screen here. On the left side of the screen, you'll see this, uh, this branch here, this tree root. And I try to look at how much space is at the bottom of the tree root right here. And once there's about this much space as I'm showing now, I'm pretty confident in the angle. Then what you do is you jump, you hold forward, and you uh, do a slope boost, so a jump attack at the peak of your jump. Then once you get launched, you basically want to mash jump so that when you land on here, uh, on this space, if you land on this little edge right here, uh, you'll start sliding off. But if you jump right away, uh, you can still get up here before you slide off. So that's why I mass jump, mass jump. But if you land up here already, if you land up this part, you're fine. But I just mass jump every time to be safe. Anyway, once you're up here, there's going to be some invisible walls and everything. You're just going to walk into this corner, um, into the tree and the invisible wall to set yourself up here. And we're going to reset the camera by light pressing F again. All right, <laughs> here's the hard part. Um, one sec. Okay, so here's the hard part. Um, that is, we're going to want to line up uh, a very specific angle again. So if you look at the background here, you will see that this background has some like, uh, I don't really know how to describe them, like white, white lines. Uh, yeah, just white lines. And we're looking for this middle white line here. Um, this one to be exact, the one I'm outlining right now. And what we want to do is we want to use our HUD here um, to align uh, or to get the exact angle. So what I do is I look at my EXP bar, the right side of it, and I try to get it just a bit over that white line. So here's the EXP bar. Here's the white line. Yeah, I try to just get it over by a little bit like this. So if you're playing at a res resolution that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and instead of a 4 by 3 aspect ratio like I am, um, this visual reference might not work to you, for you and you might have to find something else, but there are a lot of things around here that you can use as a visual reference. This is just what I use and I recommend. Once you're aligned like so though, do it again, reset the camera, bit over. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna sneak right. And I just wanna sneak right little bits by little bits until you're right on the edge of the slope here. Um, you'll see this, if you hit this part, if you're all the way over there, you'll slide off. And what I look for is actually look at this little um, darker spot below Bilbo's foot. And I try to be on the right side of that. So um, let me actually step away here so I can show the darker spot better. Uh, 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 so this is the darker spot that I'm actually looking at right there in the center of that. So again, try to reset the camera. 
HUD EXP bar slightly over the right of that white line, inch right, so I'm just just to the right side of that splotch. And then here comes the, the hard and tricky part. If your angle isn't perfect, this isn't going to work. Um, so that's why we do all that setup. Once you're here, what you're going to do is you're going to jump and you're going to hold W uh, once you start nearing the peak of your jump. Okay, and it happened there. I clipped into the tree successfully. It's possible that you don't clip into the tree successfully and you get slid off and you have to do it again and it's super frustrating and it costs a bunch of time. Um, but this is what you would like to see, that you are clipped in the tree like so. Um, there are times you might clip through the tree entirely if you have a slightly off angle or there are times when you get boosted off or there's times you don't get clipped at all and in that case I just recommend resetting the whole setup and trying again. Anyway, once you're here, um, I'm going to turn around so I am directly facing this branch in the back here, this one, the one that's behind the big branch here. And I'm going to hold W. I might have just messed it up because I clicked back in. Yeah, I messed it up because I clicked back in, so let me do that again. Uh, once I clicked back in, I jumped because of clicking back in, which I didn't want. Alright, so once you're back in here, align to that branch, hold W, and because I'm explaining it, I, I know, <laughs> I'm like slowing down on parts I shouldn't be slowing down. Whoops. Alright, again, anyway, you're going to hold W and you're going to jump a couple times until you clip out. You kind of have to be wary, because um, if you clip out earlier than you expect, it might mess up. Alright, we're clipped out, and you're just going to walk up this back branch here. This part is tricky, be very careful. Once you're walked up here, you're going to jump to this branch over here and turn around, you're going to jump to that branch. Your jump might get eaten. If that happens, don't panic. Just let yourself drop and try it again, like so. Careful. All right, once you're on here, you see I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to jump again to get back up, otherwise I might slide off. Jump into the corner here, and once you're all the way up this branch, um, you can go up once more to be safe. And we're gonna long jump just over this direction. The trigger's quite big, and we're done. Okay, that's that's very difficult. Something you'll have to practice a lot. Even the best runners mess it up a lot. It is just that tough, um, but it's doable. I'll show it again for the sake of showing it what it might look like when you're doing it fast and so on. Oop, that is one of the things that can happen. I was actually a little bit surprised that hadn't happened yet. <laughs> Thought I was showing off in the tutorial. Alright, that is a slightly faster execution of it. Not the fastest, but pretty good. So, that's Barrel's next a warm welcome. This is a more technical level, um, but not hard. You just need to know what you're doing, so pay close attention. Alright. Once we start the level, we're just going to take a hard left and move along the docks here. Then, once you reach the first turn, take a right, then take another left. Go below this little bridge, whatever you call it, and go over this little bridge, and we're here. This is the important part. What we're going to do is we're going to jump out of bounds here and do some crap that's going to make us slide through the water, and we're going to fall in a trigger down there, and that's going to end the level. Um, so what we do is we jump onto this little um, pole right here, and the way we do that is just stand right in front of it, uh, press space and light tap W. That way you're gonna land on and not overshoot. It's easy to overshoot with keyboard controls, but if you do it that way, it shouldn't happen. Then you're gonna align yourself with the the tallest mountain here. You don't have to go into target mode. I was just doing that to show. And then you're gonna long jump and you're going to jump attack. And it's not very strict if your angle is decent. Alright, now we are out here on an invisible floor, which I'm going to actually show you. No clue why this invisible floor is here, and my game just crashed from trying to show you. 
Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's this invisible floor extending around there. We're actually going to want to follow that floor a bit and um, get to a specific spot, and then we're going to continue. Yeah, unfortunately, dev mode caused some crashes. You know how it is. Let me just get back there. Um, don't think I have a save there. No, I should actually. I should have a save there. Again, don't be afraid to save during your speedruns, especially if you're starting out. Um, yeah. So this, this might be a save you make. It would be a pretty good one. And get up on this pole, look at the peak of the mountains, jump attack, you're out of bounds. Now to get along this uh, invisible floor, I try to look at like the reflection on the water here. And that's like the angle I take to, to get a good angle. Uh, it's not strict, but obviously the better the angle is here, the faster you're going to be going. I do about four slash jumps before I know that I'm in the right spot. Then if I look left, you'll see that I'm at the right side of the boat of the boats here that are docked. Um, that's about where you want to be. This means we are pretty much over the trigger, um, at least in this axis. All right, now, um, this part is a bit tricky. You're gonna be, wanna be looking pretty much straight at the edges of this boat. Like, make sure you're aligned completely straight with um, with these imaginary lines, right? If you are, then you might see that there's this water everywhere here, but the water has this weird cutoff edge um around here it's quite hard to see but it cuts off and there's no more effects here here's a void we want to walk to the edge of that water and once you get close to it i'm going to start tiptoeing and just light tapping w over and over again and at some point you'll see the water starts rippling like so once the water ripples, do like two or three more small inches. One, two, three. And now we're pretty much right on the edge I was showing earlier. Look, we're around the edge. And the reason we want this is because we can do some shenanigans here. And the shenanigans are we're going to go into rock throwing mode, which you're going to do by holding F. And we're actually going to look left to this building exactly where you're looking doesn't matter the motion we're about to do matters because if we throw a rock and swipe our camera in a direction uh, we will be slightly moving into that direction while we're in rock throwing mode so what we're going to do is we're going to right click or the attack button whatever you bound it to um, to throw a rock and we're going to swipe the camera right really fast and we didn't fall off yet we moved a bit but we didn't fall off yet we do it again do it again and you see we've fallen into the water when you see this happens let go of your mouse right away <laughs> because next is uh, an important part and that is every mouse movement we make every little moment the camera turns we're going to be sinking further into this water and if we sink too far we drown we want to sink to a point where the water sweeps us away but we don't drown yet so the water can make us drift away slowly to safety pretty much. And the best way of doing this, in my opinion, is by using the arrow keys which move the uh, camera as well. And just light tap the left and right arrow keys until we see that we're actually moving. So I tap left slightly, we're not moving. Tap right slightly, we're moving. If you look at the background while this is going on, you can see right if I draw this line here, um, Oh, we actually stopped moving. Okay, that's a rare case where uh, you don't fall into the water just enough. Then you start moving and you don't stop moving. So we moved just a slight bit more. Boom. Okay, and you can see we're clearly moving now. Uh, maybe I wasn't moving before. Maybe I saw wrong. But yeah, we're clearly moving and slowly being swept away by the water. This is good. This means that we're getting where we want to be. Uh, this takes a little bit. We'll be here for about 40 seconds. Um, but I would rather... Show you the whole trick again. First, 
we'll add them later. So again, we're gonna jump out there. We're gonna go across this invisible platform, just across the edge. And then once we're at these boats, we're gonna inch forward, we see the water move. We're gonna align our camera, swipe it left. If you set yourself up right at the edge, which I'll do in actual run attempts, you might fall off in one throw. But I feel like if you're doing it in one throw right now, when you're just getting started, it's quite uh, risky and maybe not worth it yet. Anyway, again, oh. probably didn't go far enough this time, actually. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Okay, I'm actually out of rocks. Uh, I messed up. I, uh, I was talking about going safe, but you can definitely go too safe and not make it with the amount of rocks you have. So, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not going to be editing this tutorial, so I'm just going to have to deal with the mistakes, but at least you know that that is a thing now. Um, align yourself with the boats. Inch. One, two, three. Boom. Boom. There we go. We're in the water. Going to hit right. Not moving. Left. Not moving. Right. Not moving. Oh, and moving. Okay, we're good. So now we don't press anything for about 40 seconds, and we'll see when we're done here. So just make sure that when you're doing the adjustments, the right-left movement, you're just tapping it extremely lightly, because if you're tapping it too much, you will drown. Anyway, what's happening right now is, while the water is sweeping us away slightly, soon we'll arrive at the edge of the water, where we can actually fall down again without drowning. Um, and as it happens, all the setup we did earlier was to put us right above a trigger that ends the level. And once we make it there, we can just go out of rock throwing mode. As you'll see, we see the edge of the water here. We're completely done moving. That means we are ready. We let, we, um, yeah, we press F to go out of targeting mode and we're right in the end trigger. That ends the level. Just like that. And I am losing my voice from this long ass tutorial. I'm sorry, I've been talking for like two hours on end. <laughs> anyway, that's warm welcome. Easy to mess up, but if you know what you're doing, you'll be fine. Next up is Inside Info. This is a bit of a harder stage, and I only know the fast way of doing this, which admittedly is a harder way of doing this. Um, you could join the Hobbit Discord and ask around for the slower way, which I never learned. Um, but I don't think the hard way is that bad. All right. Anyway, once you start, we're just going to head here into Smog's Lair. You can just do some slash jumps and whatever. And long jump into this cutscene. Once that cutscene plays, we're going to do some sh movement here. And then... I'm going to jump onto this broken piece of floor or whatever it is. And from here, we're going to clip out of bounds. I'm going to show you the slower way of clipping, which I used to use. Um, basically, what we do is you try to walk into this corner. And also, I recommend moving the camera down a bit. So by default, hold caps and move down a bit. For me, it's hold tab and move the mouse uh, up a bit, actually, so the camera moves down. Then when you walk to the corner, you'll see yourself starting to slide left. If you don't come in the right way, you might not be sliding left. In that case, I just strafe right a bit and I go in again at a slightly different angle. So this doesn't work. I change the angle, try again, change the angle. There I go, I'm sliding in. Now, once you see that the wall is kind of repelling you like so, we're gonna turn our camera a little more and we'll see we start violently moving and we clip through now if you clip through too much you'll fall out of bounds and if you remember the thing i explained in flies and spiders where it's like um it puts you back where you were walking if, it, if you mess up it'll just put you right back up here so that's fine what we actually want to do is the moment we see we start violently clipping like so we've clipped in quite a bit we want to stop holding w because uh if we keep holding w now we'll just clip through the wall and we won't get through then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look pretty much into the wall and almost straight with it, just slightly to the right. I'm going to start sneaking. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to press W to get into the wall. I haven't done this strat in a bit, so I'm a little bit rusty on the visual cues and whatever. I think I moved too far. I turned too far left there. Uh, um, 
Yep, so I'm gonna start sneaking. And then if you look at Bilbo's hair, uh, where's my pen? Here's my pen. There's like these lines across it, these kind of shaded lines. I'm gonna look for this, this line right here. And once that's kind of clipped through the wall at this angle while you're sneaking, um, then I think you're ready to go. What you do then is you're just gonna turn left. I'm gonna point the camera to have an upward view and I'm going to jump and hold W and we're down here. Here you'll have to be careful. Um, you're gonna be doing some out of bounds shenanigans but hopefully my game doesn't crash from showing you this. There is, if I show the triggers, a death trigger right here. <laughs> if you touch this, <clears throat> if you get all the way in here, for some reason Smog will see you. I don't know why it's this far out of bounds, but yeah, Smog will see you and that's not good because you will be caught and die. So just make sure you go around it. Um, as long as it's, oh my god, the the coin's gonna spook me there. As long as you, uh, as the center of Bilbo isn't in it, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, be careful with those coins if you stand on them for too long. Uh, you will be caught by smog as well. So I just jump over and I walk around the coins for a bit and you see the meter went up, but we're still fine. Now we're gonna go around the edge here and I still have trigger showing for a reason. And here's the important part. Once you reach about here, you just kind of got to get a feel for it. There aren't too many visual references. Um, that white wall you see right there is the end trigger of the level. However, unfortunately, if I show you collision and I fly over there just to show you, you'll see there's also this invisible wall in front of it. So what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to jump in an angle that we go around the invisible wall, but still hit the end trigger. However, the end trigger is also quite far out. Um, so it's quite difficult to hit this trick. It's pretty hard and it's one of those things that even good runners will mess up sometimes. Um, all right, so the way I go about setting this up is I stand here. If you look on the ground, there's these tile textures and there's this little, there's these dark creases that I will be standing on the tip of this dark crease and I move the camera up, I tiptoe. And the reason I tiptoe is because you, uh, you'll you see that Bilbo hold, holds the stick straight up. And I will hide the end triggers for now actually because it's kind of cheating for me obviously. If I can see the trigger, because you're not supposed to be able to see the trigger. Uh, you're supposed to blind jump it. All right, and I align my stick about so. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking at this platform down here. There are these textures along the edge of it. Let me move a bit so the stick is out of the way. Um, and what I'm mainly looking for is this dark spot right here. And I try to align it so my stick is about on the center of that dark spot when I'm sneaking. So it looks something like this. From there, you want to be doing a long jump pretty close to the edge and you want to jump attack mid jump and ideally you jump attack a bit later than when it first becomes possible. So you just got to get a feeling for the timing. It's possible if you mash jump attack that you hit it, but you can go a slight bit further if you delay it just the slightest bit. Anyway, here's what it, look, what it looks like. I hope I don't miss it. I missed it, I went too far left. <laughs> oh crap, I should've made a save. Um, so yeah, that's just one of those things. I hit the invisible wall, that's why I, um, that's why I kinda got bounced to the right. And I think I wasn't looking at where I was standing quite enough. I actually tried to be on the right side of it, um, or like this crease on the wall. Normally I'm slightly on the left side of it, I mean. So my right foot is on the crease. However, um, I thought I wasn't that strict, but I should take more care. And then for the setup, try to be kind of on the right side of it. Uh, let's try it again.
there you go. Definitely mess around with it. Um, try to get comfortable with it. Find a setup that works for you. I know um, pretty much every runner uses a different setup for this. This is the one I like and I do occasionally mess it up. But I'll show you all that again. Just uh, like, like I mentioned before. Nothing to be shamed of if you miss this trick. It is quite hard and I would recommend saving right here if you are doing attempts and you don't want to lose your attempts to stupid stuff to like missing that anyway let's set up again start clipping inch look at the edge on bilbo's hair oh i went too far uh oh that's actually not the strat i use for this anymore use a slightly faster strat to clip through here now but I would still recommend this one. And okay, jump and we're there. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Here's the thing, uh, I was low again. For some reason I'm low on this save. And the way I do normally, don't take fall damage, but because I'm doing this way, let me just regen my health. Uh, because I'm doing this way, you take a bit of fall damage, but because I only had a fraction of my health left, I did die this time. Well, normally when I'm practicing this, I don't die. Sorry about that. Kind of scuffed tutorial here. Again, this is kind of a placeholder tutorial. All right, we're through. Find the crease. Right foot on the crease. Stick on the reference, boom, and shoot, man. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> okay, so sorry for the scuffed setup. I feel like I can actually do it better if I, um, if I'm just like doing it in runs and doing it fast, but you know, definitely mess around with your own setup. It's a hard trick, it's quite precise. There are Right, there we go um depending on your pc that might be slightly easier for you because there are certain scenarios where if you have a certain cpu speed you get a further long jump and if you have a far long jump you can do it from further right and curve in more and have less of a less trouble avoiding the invisible wall but that's a, it's only a slight difference it'll still be a hard trick anyway uh, the rest of the run is pretty straightforward and not all too hard <clears throat> starting with the gathering of the clouds here so once you start this level you're just gonna take a slight left and skip this text box and we're gonna go up this staircase here into this corner and we're gonna want to clip through this corner i'm gonna make a dev mode save here because there are various ways to clip through here and i'll show you a couple the first way i want to show you is the slow and consistent way where you basically you walk into this wall try to be straight with it and then you just turn right a little bit. This is the angle you're going for. Then when you're into this corner like this, you just start spamming jump and you will eventually clip through. Not the fastest way. That was still a pretty fast one of getting it. Um, if you're not clipping, your angle might be too steep. I would recommend adjusting it a little bit, but it's pretty easy and that's the way I would recommend learning it. If you're trying to speed things up though, um, there's a more way less consistent way. Um, but it can get you through there super fast, is if you go into the corner at pretty much a 45 degree angle like so, then you slash jump and you hold right mid jump. You'll, you might, if you do it right, you might clip in a lot and you might just go straight through or you might only need one or two more jumps to get through. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like. I didn't get in that far, so I didn't um, clip through that quick. There we go, that was a pretty quick one. So yeah, that's the alternate strat you could learn. Anyway, when you're in here, um, I'm gonna go over this debris, and I recommend putting the ring on here. Uh, normally in the speed run, you only have four or three hearts. I don't, I don't even remember. I think you have three hearts here in the PC run. Um, and these spiders, they will uh, hit you down to like half a heart and have a good chance of poisoning you and you're pretty much guaranteed dead if they hit you. So that's why I recommend putting on the ring and don't get too close to them because they will still hit you if you get very close to them. 
All right, anyway, once you're through here, you reach this room. And once you're in this room, we're gonna go down to that pillar there. And over here, we're gonna look at, uh, let me draw for clarity. And look at this little edge here. We're gonna want to go into this corner at about a 45 degree angle relative to this here. So ideally, you, you're gonna wanna go in at about um, this angle, about what I'm coming in now. It's not too strict and you can adjust it easier. Once you're in here, you're gonna jump and you're gonna be holding W during all this. So that wasn't the right angle. I assume I have to turn left a little bit. Nope, nope. There we go. I, I end up having to go right a bit. Then you start clipping in and once you're clipping in, you wanna keep holding W and turn left a bit. You'll see you start going through the wall quite quickly and it's hard to explain this while doing it in real time. That's why I stopped. But um, basically during this entire ordeal, you wanna slowly rotate your camera left and you will be clipped through perfectly. Let me show it in full speed because it makes more sense that way, I think. This is not a good clip. I think I turned left too early. That's why it took a while. Show it again. There we go. That's a good clip. And once you're out here, you can just go to the Arkin Stone over there. Right here. And that ends the level. Really not that difficult. Shouldn't need more explanation than that, hopefully. All right, um, I guess one thing I'll warn you about if you are on that previous clip not turning left at the right time, you will fall out of bounds and you will get warped back up to where you were last walking. So that would probably be um, right before the clip again and you just have to do it again. Okay, so this is the final level, the clouds burst. And um, this is the second longest level in the run, but not half as difficult as overhill and underhill in my opinion although it does have its own fair eh, maybe it is difficult not as difficult to optimize but maybe more difficult to learn we'll see anyway just take a sharp left when you start this level and we're just gonna move on over up this little hill ledge whatever it is here trigger this cutscene and gonna approach this barricade and I put on the ring here because these um, monsters, I don't actually know what type of monsters are, goblins, I don't know. Uh, they're going to be shooting arrows at this, and if you're on here, uh, they will be trying to shoot you. And sometimes you're unlucky and they'll shoot you right away. Anyway, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get up on these planks here. And then from these planks, we're going to try to slope boost up there. Let me get off before I get sniped. Uh, we're going to try to slope boost up on there, uh, which is a bit tricky, admittedly. So... Um, by the way, I forgot to mention this, but the geometry of this little thing is kind of like this. Um, let me exaggerate it a bit. Oops, that's... Hello, clear it. It's kind of like this. So this part here is too high up, so you actually want to go on this part. Um, yeah. Jump up there, get on these planks, take off the ring, and you want to slash jump, all right? <laughs> slash jump and do a jump attack once you're just before the ledge i know it's difficult it's easy to choke if you mess up i recommend putting the ring on right away getting back up taking your time setting it up and doing it doing it again that might happen no biggie just set it up again ring off there you go pretty tricky um if you're doing it right though you shouldn't get punished too hard for missing it okay now, once we're out of bounds here, we're just going to follow um, the, the out of bounds path here pretty much. And you can take a little shortcut through here. This can be a little awkward jumping through here. Um, if you have trouble jumping through here, you can also go around. It's slightly slower and go through here and here. Um, but the important part is that we are trying to get to here. So. I want to walk here a bit on purpose. All right, make sure you walk a bit on purpose. If you remember the flies and spiders thing we're talking about, I'll recap because it's very important. Um, what we're going to be doing soon is going to be called a clip warp. And that is where the game remembers the last spot you were quote unquote safe 
determined by when you were last walking for about a second and it will put you back there if something back bad happens we're going to abuse that in this case so we want to make sure that our safe position is set here so when i come in here i'm going to do a slash jump and i'm going to be walking for a bit before i move on and from this point on until i tell you next time we are going to be constantly jumping and i'm just going to show you this once before going over the details because it'll be hard to go through the details while showing it Anyway, we're constantly jumping, so the game still knows that we were safe last about right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and I'm going down in a specific way. Just standing for that long doesn't matter. It doesn't reset our position. I'm going to hit a trigger to spawn in those goblins or whatever they are. There. And I'm going to go up this edge and do some buggy stuff off of the ladder and it puts me back up here because the game just thought oh that's something that wasn't supposed to happen we're gonna put him back and that's exactly what it did so what did i just do there um first of all again all of this would be while you're jumping you can stand on the ground for about a second and be fine uh and you might need that to turn around during certain parts this is quite a difficult trick um to learn but once you get it down you'll be fine so, uh, I'm going to tab out and show you some stuff. Right here, here's what was happening behind the scenes. Is I was going down to about here. And I was inching into this trigger to load these monsters. And then I went out over to here. And what I did was I went up this slope, up this little edge here. I jumped and held backwards, which made me grab the ladder. Then I held right while I'm at the bottom of the ladder like this. And while holding right, I pressed E to let me let go of the ladder. And what that does, if you're low enough on the ladder, I don't know why I wasn't. Um, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. Oh, actually, we're fine. Uh, I'm dumb. I was getting clipboard back to where I was standing because that's where I was last safe. Uh, let me set it over here, so... I can demonstrate better. Get in the corner, clip warp back, and you see we warp. Because what we were doing uh, was we were doing something the game didn't expect us to do, which was fall off that ladder in a certain way while at the bottom of it. Um, that's that's how it worked. Now, how you can do this consistently. Um, because it is pretty difficult, because you can't see these triggers normally. Um, so, let's go over the whole segment again. Uh, and ideally, I think what I'll do is, this might take a, take a second, is I will restart the level real quick and we'll get over here again using some dev mode stuff. Oh, just so I can show you the whole thing. So I don't know why my input display is messing up and showing tabs stuck sometimes. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do it fly mode. So normally you'd be putting on the ring here, slow boosting up here, following along this edge. Zoom, zoom. You jump through here. And here's the big deal. Let me make a C just in case I have to show this again. Um, walk for a bit. One, two. And here's the important part. I look at this edge of this um, pillar. And from this edge, I mentally draw a line to that piece of the background texture here. So what we have going on is if you see this little A almost, I am aiming at the right side of this A. So I am aiming at, um, that's a fat circle. All right, let's just <laughs> hand draw that. I'm aiming at this. Why do I have a highlighter now? <laughs> Uh, I messed up the program. Okay, I am aiming at this part, and I'm going from here, and I'm trying to go this straight line. And if we look at this line, while well, I enable the trigger and hopefully don't crash the game again, that's one trigger, and then there's the other trigger. That's going to move us just into the yellow triggers, which is exactly what we want to hit. Once we do that, I'm not going to hold my clipboard while I'm explaining this again. Um, once we do that, 
We're either in it already and we spawn the enemies, or we're slightly off and we might need to inch right. If you need to inch right, that's fine. Now here's the important part. You want to be careful. If you inch too far right, there's this white trigger here, which is a cutscene trigger. And what that's going to do is that's going to trigger Corwin's text box. And he's going to start taking damage from these enemies. Um, and basically, if Corwin dies, you lose. So if this happens to you, you have two options. You, you die here and you have to do that again. Or you do the upcoming segment so fast, Corwin doesn't have a chance to die, which is... Pretty possible if you're fast at the game, but not recommended. So generally, just stay away from that um, trigger. Okay, well, let me actually show it for real now. And we'll move on. So I've been standing here. My safe spot is set up here. I go across this corner to the little right side of the A there. I move forward and I look, I, I didn't mention this before, I should mention this, uh, going fly mode just so my clipboard doesn't get reset. I look at these three gems and I try to go up until I'm like next to the middle one. So I would be right about there, right? So again, I haven't lost my clipboard because I went fly mode. My safe spot is still set up there. Go about here and then I turn around and I go back in that direction. Make sure you go back pretty much to where you came from. If you go back too far right, you'll hit the cutscene trigger and activate Corwin uh, anyway, so he'll start dying. All right, so once we do that, we're gonna head on over to the ladder. And we are going to jump into the ladder so it grabs the bottom. Then we're gonna hold right, press E, it's gonna warp us back up. Now the whole reason we did that, oh, hold up, gotta run, doorbell. bad timing the whole reason we did that is um uh so we could load the next area because that was the load trigger for the next area and the only way for us known way for us to get down there and load it while skipping a bunch of stuff is to do that so now we're up here again at the pillar where we set our safe spot and we're just gonna take a left and this area wasn't previously loaded but now it is and we can go through here we're just gonna be moving for a bit again You can implement some long jumps here and there to make this faster. And head over here. Skip this cutscene. We're gonna head up this ladder. You're gonna want to be a little bit careful around this ladder. I'm gonna make a save just in case something goes wrong. Um, which I'll actually show something that can go wrong. If you grab the ladder from the bottom and you're like, oh no, I didn't even grab it from the bottom, you can actually accidentally clip warp. And if your clip warp was back far, your clipboard position was back far which is possible because you jump for movement uh, and you do this you might warp all the way back and fall out of bounds and be permanently soft locked so just be careful you're not like holding down and pressing e on the ladder which might happen if you're trying to go fast um but ideally you like strafe around the ladder you jump and you grab it at the peak of your jump careful because the hitbox around the ladder <laughs> is quite large um you can start grabbing it when you might not want to if you're too close to it already, like so. And that might be one of those cases where you panic and you think, oh, I want to let go and you clip or back and you're, you're stuck. If that happens, just climb up slowly. This enemy might mess you up, but it just sucks. In general, <laughs> I recommend going a wide arc around the ladder and doing what I just did. It's a small thing, but I like to mention that it can screw you over because it's better than you finding out in a run and having your run die to it. Um, because you didn't know. Anyway, once we're up here, we're gonna head over to this barrel here, this catapult. I'm gonna jump on the catapult. I'm gonna be right in front here where you see this barrel is up there. And you just wanna jump and mash E and I'll tr trigger the barrel on the cutscene and it's super easy. Um, it puts you over here. We're gonna long jump down here and we're going to go over these little islands. Um, these goblins, whatever they are, they can mess you up a little bit. Uh, just be careful around them. Do your sh movement, do your thing. Skip this cutscene and we can... I'll show a small movement optimization here in a second. But yeah, you climb the, the chain, you jump around here, you trigger that cutscene and you're down here. If you want to do that just like a fraction of a second faster, well, maybe it's close to like a whole second. Um, once you long jump to this chain or whatever, you jump up here, 
you can jump backwards and you can jump onto here and go around this is a little bit trickier than it sounds because you can slide off this edge so i wouldn't recommend it unless you are a little more experienced but i'd like to like for you to know about it anyway anyway um once you're down here which if you came from that way you can be going this way and also be down here uh you're going to go uh, onto this bridge and next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a Kobe a rock through to hit a barrel at the other edge of this So I'm gonna make a save because I'd like to show you but I don't want to mess up any triggers um, Basically what you normally do here is you go around these islands you go below here You climb up here go past these enemies then you throw a rock from here to hit that barrel over there to knock down the bridge so the bear I forgot his name the bear can come over and um what we can actually do is instead of doing all that we were just here we can go and we can walk over here and we're gonna look at these two planks right you have all these big planks and you have this one that's kind of split into it's two smaller planks so we're gonna stand there and we're gonna be standing on also like the support beam that's below it that's the position we want to aim for now once we're here we're gonna go into target mode and we're going to rock throw um, to a specific spot to hit that barrel. So how we're aligning this is you're basically looking for this bridge here and this pillar here. You want to aim for the center of that, so between the two, maybe slightly more of the right of the center, something like this. And then you want to aim all the way up and throw your rock from there. And that's going to hit that barrel perfectly without having to go around. Nice. Let me show that again. For the sake of it, with approach and everything. So you're coming from down here, you go up here, look for the two planks, down on the support beam, target mode, line it up, throw. And you hit it. Perfecto mundo. All right, coming up, um, there is something that's slightly scary. It's not hard, it's just scary. And make another save real quick just to show. And what you have going on here is we want to go out of bounds in this area. And the way we do that is we just do a normal jump up here. The reason that's scary is because if you're slightly too late on this, it is a huge time loss. If you just fall down there, you have just lost a bunch of time. So you really want to make sure that you jump early. And be a little bit careful jumping out of the right here. Because there is one invisible piece of geometry that might mess you up. So I'd make sure that you aren't exactly hugging the left wall. It is quite generous though, if you look. That was a really early jump. Again, even that super early jump worked. Uh, it's not a jump to be afraid of, but it is good to take in mind that if it does, if you do fail it, it's going to cost you a bunch of time. Anyway, once you're up there, you can either go to the right side of this and do a slight slope boost up here. I don't recommend it when you're learning, um, but... What you can also do is you can jump on this debris behind you, then jump on over to this debris. And once we're here, it's going to load the next area. We're going to follow around this path. Now, hopefully I don't crash my game again. It's been a minute and we're almost done, so it'd be nice if it didn't crash again. You see that white trigger there? That's a cutscene trigger. If you hit that cutscene trigger, it's going to put you down at the bottom. Basically the same effect as if you had missed that jump and it would majorly suck. So be careful not to hit that trigger on accident. So just stay clear of that left edge. We're going to go over here to this catapult. We're going to climb this catapult. And then from this little um, log, we're going to jump over to this barricade. Then we're going to slope boost out this barricade. Just jump and do a slope boost at the peak of your jump while holding W. Super easy. Then we're going to jump to the right. And there's an invisible wall here that we will be going around. Like so. I just wanted to show it. And we're going to jump down. And we're going to hit this barrel. And that is going to complete our run. I'm not going to do it because I want to show that segment one more time. But once you hit that barrel, you are done. So, coming from out of bounds. You come in like this. You'll jump on over. Boom, boom. Go down here, and you hit the barrel, and you beat the game. Congrats. Um, yeah. I guess that's it for the tutorial. However, 
I will show you a backup just in case. Um, because it would suck if you lost your first run here. In the case that you do fall down here, which would be like, if you were had a decent time, it would guarantee kill your time. But there is uh, an alternate route you can do. It's kind of an older route from the GameCube era. So you can go down here to the right under this uh, trebuchet. Follow the right wall. Climb this island onto the catapult, onto this plank with a barrel. And you can jump and do a jump attack to reach over here. And that's actually really, really strict if you don't have the extended long jump uh, thing that I've mentioned earlier. But it is, it is possible. Um, oh, my jumps are getting eaten. Okay, let me just fly up there. Oh no, I forgot. I restarted my game so I don't have dev mode. Okay, okay. Let me show you again. This is obviously something I haven't practiced because it's not something that I should miss. Um, but I will show it for the sake of it. Okay, you know what? Um, I'm just going to show you what happens when you're up there because I want to wrap this tutorial up. My throw is killing me. Our fly mode, we actually did land up here. Totally no cheats. Then you can hit this enemy to get your jump slash back quicker. You can slow boost up on this barricade here. Go to the left. Jump up here. Oop. Not all the way to the left, I guess. I guess you go to like the, the, the darker plank in the middle. Yeah, that lets you jump up. And then you do this. Like I said, I haven't done that backup in a while. But um, yeah, that will get you there. That's pretty good. And that's it. That is the Hobbit. Uh, any percent, no major glitches on PC. Um, sorry this tutorial was rough. Obviously, a better tutorial will be coming out in the future. It is in the works. But I wanted to put something out there because I heard there were people interested in the speedrun. And we didn't have resources yet. But yeah, uh, if there are any questions, we have the Hobbit Community Discord. You can just ping any of us on there. Well, don't ping us. Just drop a message in the chat, actually. Don't ping us. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely get back to you. Alright, hopefully that helps. Good luck learning.